Okay, how do... Uh, well, we're going to get to how to protect against viruses in a bit, and uh, it's actually fairly simple. Uh, Fred Cohen, uh, grandfather of virus research, at least academically, um, uh, outlined the only three ways to, to deal with it uh, back in 1984, before uh, viruses really were a, an issue in the wild. But anyway, uh, the... The thing is that viruses, virus writers, um, have programmed um, functions into their creations to try and avoid detection. And so what do they do in terms of uh, anti-detection measures? Well, um, there is what is referred to as stealth. Now, uh, stealth uh, uh, sometimes just gets uh, used as all forms of anti-detection measures uh, combined. And, you know, once again, uh, that's not helpful uh, because the different um, anti-detection measures give rise to different protective measures and detection, you know, additional detection methods um, that you can use. But it, it depends on what the specific anti-detection measure is that you're protecting against. So, um, stealth is... Uh, the uh, trying not to um, indicate either to the user or to the system that a change has taken place. And, and so uh, a number of viruses, uh, going back a ways, would, would dig into the operating system, would uh, trap the, the interrupt chain um, for... Uh, uh, looking at disk and and seeing what the characteristics of a given file were, and so, uh, for example, for a file infector, it would uh, uh, look at uh, you know keep an eye all the time on um, uh, whether uh, somebody was looking to see the file size, looking to see the file creation date, looking to see if any of the attributes of the file had been changed. Those types of things, and um, if uh, somebody was looking at the, the file size, for example, um, the uh, virus would, would respond, instead of allowing the uh, normal operating system request to go ahead and, and would essentially lie and, and return the original file size. Uh, so... Uh, and, and in the same way, um, when uh, a request was made to read this file, to, to examine the code of the file, um, the, uh, <coughs> the virus would, instead of returning the existing file as it, it was, would return information for the original file. And, and so again, would lie. And, and when you look at the uh, file itself, you would only see characteristics and, and in fact, the code of the original file, uh, unchanged. Uh, so that's um, that's what the stealth was. That, you know, hook into the interrupt chain um, and mess with uh, the way the system uh, reported information on the files. Um, uh, then, uh, well, we had uh, um, uh, some reference to that in, in terms of tunneling. Um, uh, we're going to talk about tunneling and, uh, uh, with regard to, uh, virtual private networks, uh, when we get into networking, but this is a different, uh, use of the term tunneling in terms of that, um, uh, you know, whether or not your, your interrupt chain is fully protected, um, is there a means for, uh, the virus to... Uh, uh, put itself in, in place somewhere in there and, and grab the requests and, and return incorrect information? Or um, is there, in fact, ways that, in terms of anti-detection anti measures, can uh, directly access the disk and, and avoid the, the requests? Even sometimes compare the requests which, of course, would be a dead giveaway uh, that something was happening here, that there was something resident in memory doing that kind of tough, kind of stealth technology. 
Uh, then polymorphism, which just means many forms. And uh, there were a couple of different ways of um, working out polymorphism uh, uh, in regard to viruses. Um, some, uh, this is fairly convoluted, but they would write the virus in, in modular form, and then uh, the virus would rearrange itself, reshuffle the, uh, the different modules uh, when it infected a new subject so that it wasn't uh, looking the same. Now, of course, the, the individual modules there would be looking the same. And, and so, um, you know, if you had a signature based on a specific module, that would uh, uh, still allow for detection. But the other form, uh, far simpler and uh, more extensively used, would be simply to um, encrypt the file and to uh, include a uh, quick decryption program, very, very simple encryption, uh, uh, simple substitution, almost, you know, the same thing as a Caesar cipher, uh, and uh, do that decryption on the fly so that the uh, uh, virus code uh, could be activated uh, appropriately, but each time it was um, it wrote itself out uh, using a different uh, uh, key for the encryption, it would of course be slightly different. Uh, now some of the um, encryption programs got more and involved and therefore you would have many many more possibilities in terms of the uh, uh, signatures for the file. Once again, um, the key to detecting uh, polymorphous uh, is, is to find the stub, the, the decryption uh, program which needs to be uh, in, the, in the clear in order to start to operate. Um, if you don't have a decryption program, you can't decrypt the decryption program type of thing. So, uh, so finding finding those signatures um, again might not specifically identify a particular virus in total but it would identify a family or a class or uh, a particular type of uh, encryption and decryption routine that would be used for this particular virus or this family of virus or you know uh, that would be clipped on to a virus and eventually we sort of had businesses and people specializing in uh, in various ways. Um, there was also uh, the uh, antivirus, um, uh, anti-malware disabling. Um, and this became uh, really interesting. Um, uh, Central Point Antivirus uh, at one point got a, uh, a license a agreement with um, and Microsoft and Microsoft's first antivirus product was basically just a repackaged version of, of Central Point. Well, of course, as soon as that happened, the uh, uh, malware exchange people uh, all uh, incorporated um, code that disabled uh, uh, Central Point and Microsoft antivirus. <laughs> It actually only took eight bytes uh, to disable it, which was really kind of interesting. That eight byte string then became an identifier, an identifying string that you could use to identify something and, and say, well, we don't exactly know what this, this may be, but we know that it's malware of some type because it's got this uh, antivirus uh, disabling uh, string in it. So interesting. Uh, way of dealing with uh, all of these things.